If you are new to this channel and enjoy the content that you see, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to be alerted and notified whenever a brand new video is posted onto this channel, along with following me on these social media platforms to stay connected with me at all times. Also, feel free to check out all of your favorite videos and playlists located down in the description box below. Thank you so much for your continued support. Now let's begin. One of the most iconic and legendary characters in all of cinema makes his grand return as Halloween 2018 has finally dawned upon us. What is going on cinema fans? Welcome to my Halloween 2018 spoiler review where today we're going to be analyzing, dissecting, and breaking down the events of Halloween 2018 and diving further into uncharted territory with spoilers. So if you guys have not seen the film prior, make sure you guys watch the film and come back so we can go on ahead and have a discussion in the comments about Halloween 2018. Halloween 2018 was directed by David Gordon Green and it stars the return of Jamie Lee Curtis as, of course, Laurie Strode and Judy Greer as Karen. The iconic and original Michael Myers, Nick Castle, reprises his role once more as Michael Myers as well as James Courtney playing the form of The Shape. And right from the start, I do want to say that if you're going into this movie with expectations and having to follow Halloween 2, Halloween 4, Halloween 5, H2O, Resurrection, you can go on ahead and feel free to toss those movies out the window because this movie is the direct sequel to the 1978 original John Carpenter Halloween movie. Now, this movie is going to be very controversial for one of many reasons. Number one, the ending. Number two, the character choices. And number three, what happens after Halloween 2018. Now, of course, with Halloween 2018 having to retcon all previous Halloween movies, the basic principle and premise of this movie is basically centering the story around Laurie Strode, having to suffer through trauma, having to suffer through so much anxiety ever since encountering Michael 40 years ago, in which the opening act for this movie takes us back to Smith's Grove Sanitarium, the original sanitarium of Michael Myers in Halloween 1978, and the basic story here are we have two interviewers that are trying to get the scoop and story on Michael Myers and why he had conducted himself the way he did 40 years ago, why he specifically chose to kill five people, and one of the interviewers actually goes as far as to show Michael the original mask that he had worn, and not knowing the fact that Michael this entire time is known that he could speak but chooses not to and it's very ominous because right from the beginning we see no emotion from Michael Myers. The basic principle here is that yes Michael Myers is a human being and they're trying to mortalize him in the idea that he does have basic human rights but through the eyes of the people that have witnessed his actions before such as Dr. Loomis who had been confirmed to pass away in this movie and of course Laurie Strode this entity is a lifeless being that's why he is referred to as the shape a blank figure void of all life and the basic principle after the narrative of them having to visit Smith's Grove Sanitarium is Michael eventually escapes now having to base the premise off of Jamie Lee Curtis she had done a fantastic job in portraying the Laurie Strode character in such a way to where you want to believe her story you want to accept the idea that she's been through so much that after having to witness her friends die after having to be pursued by a random lunatic who wanted her dead 40 years ago this entire time she had been prepping in order to kill Michael until the very day he had escaped, in which coincidentally Michael Myers does. Now the moment Michael Myers escapes the bus transfer in which he was going to be led to a different facility to live out the rest of his days, is when we really begin to see Michael Myers' aggressive side, especially when roaming around Hattonfield. Now the murders that have occurred in this movie were actually pretty brutal because some were actually kept to the imagination while others were basically thrown in your face. As an example, there was a specific scene where Michael Myers had broken to a woman's home and the moment he gets behind her not only does he grab her by the hair and bash her face against the table once but instantly without a moment's notice we see how he stabs her directly through the neck with the butcher knife before leaving her for dead not to mention the fact that he does go around killing random people but i really did enjoy the altercation between michael and Lori because as the movie progresses we get to feel the tension and the build-up between the two Lori's looking for michael michael's looking for Lori, and then when they finally encounter each other it's more more or less a situation to where Lori Strode manages to shoot Michael on the shoulder, but somehow he gets away so she can't really track him down. But then eventually towards the end, what I really did enjoy was the final confrontation between both Lori and Michael, and although it was brief in my opinion, you can feel the tension from both parties because Lori is really coming after Michael Myers. She wasn't afraid of him this time, and it really presented a different element to the story because Michael Myers
Myers, although he was backed into a corner several different times against Lori, he was still ambitious enough in hunting her down and killing her until the very end. And speaking of the end, there were certain things and concepts about the end that I did not understand myself. For example, again, big spoiler alert, by the end of this movie, the shape burns. They managed to trap Michael Myers in the basement of the house and more or less acting as if it was a ploy the entire time to where the granddaughter and daughter felt helpless. It was the daughter of Lori Strode that basically managed to shoot Michael in the neck before Lori capitalized in knocking him down into the basement to where they sealed him down below and letting off a couple of gas pipes and then eventually setting the entire house on fire. Now, the end scene of this movie was absolutely creepy to its very core because as Michael Myers is trapped there, caged like an animal while everything around him is burning, he is looking up not only at Laurie Strode, but Laurie Strode's daughter and Laurie Strode's granddaughter. And without any expression, without any emotion, without even moving a single inch, Michael Myers, while burning, is looking up at Lori Strode, he's looking up at her daughter and her granddaughter, but eerily enough, as the granddaughter, daughter, and Lori Strode eventually escape, we see how they manage to track down a local driver in trying to help them in their aid in getting to a nearby hospital or a police station, and while back inside the house, as the camera shifted, we don't see anybody in the basement that Michael Myers was trapped in after the house was burning down, and that's very eerie because because at the end of the movie, after the credits, we don't really see anything, but we begin to hear Michael Myers breathing. That's all you hear at the very end is breathing, and that to me kind of insinuates the fact that it's not over, so yes, Laurie Strode does live, and so does Michael Myers, but to which extent are they going to go in in terms of finally concluding this story? Because the way the narrative was for this movie, this movie was supposed to be a double shot feature. They were going to go on ahead and shoot another movie back to back, but they held off on that just to see how this movie does. Now, I'm fairly certain that David Gordon Green does have plans for a sequel, as a sequel was talked about for many months now, but the question is how do they pull the story of Michael? Michael Myers surviving after the entire house burnt down while he was trapped inside of the basement with no other reserves or anything to do to escape. That's the ultimate question because you can ultimately somehow have him still be alive but then ultimately the element of the boogeyman having to be immortal would still live on and they basically managed to somehow humanize Michael in this movie because he did feel pain. He was badly injured in this movie just to give you guys some examples there was a scene where Lori Strode turned the shotgun around as she was being strangled and literally blew off Michael Myers' fingers off of his left hand then there was a scene where she shot him in the shoulder she stabbed him a few times including by the rib cage and on his back and Lori Strode's daughter Karen shot him directly in the neck and not to mention the fact that he was in the basement burning alive without even moving a muscle so that's what's very interesting to me however they did kind of insinuate at the very end that something was going on with Allison, something was going on with Laurie Strode's daughter, because at the end of the movie, we see how the camera slowly pans down, and Allison had to use Michael Myers' knife to basically allow herself to stab Michael and relinquish her mom from having to be pulled down in the basement with him. So we see her clinging on to the knife at the end, and eerily enough, if you really paid attention and you really focused in on the way she was holding the knife, it was the exact same way Michael Myers Myers was holding his knife in the original Halloween 1978 version which happened 40 years ago. And after having to examine this further, I really hope that they don't eventually make Allison to be the heir to Michael Myers' throne or to continue his legacy somehow because I think that only then would that be a detriment to the story? There can only be one Michael Myers, there can only be one Freddy Krueger, there can only be one Jason Voorhees, so I feel like if Michael Myers' legacy were to be passed on through her, that would indefinitely jeopardize the entire franchise, and that is something that I personally don't want to see. But I do think that since a sequel is inevitable, somebody has to die. So I'm calling it right now, and I'm prognosticating this way ahead, I think that Michael Myers in the next movie is going to 
somehow kill Laurie Strode, and I think the person that might end up killing Michael Myers in retaliation to killing Laurie Strode is going to be Allison. So Michael kills Laurie, and Allison kills Michael. That's what I'm calling in the next film, because it only makes sense, especially with Allison's connection to her grandmother more so than her mom, because Allison in the movie, although she is Laurie's granddaughter, she has more of an established connection with her than her actual mother. So that was something that I found really fascinating, but the one element in this movie that I really did not enjoy was the element of the new Dr. Loomis. Now, we had a brand new doctor be introduced by the name Dr. Sertain, and in the beginning, he kind of portrayed himself to be a good guy. He was really trying to follow in the footsteps of Dr. Loomis and trying to further examine Laurie Strode, having to study up on Michael Myers, and there was a huge twist by the third act of the movie where the doctor ended up killing the sheriff to gain a better understanding as to what it felt felt like to be Michael Myers, and then proceeded to take off Michael Myers' mask and wearing it as a kind of like a symbolic passing in trying to get a better understanding as to what drives Michael to basically do what he does. And the whole narrative from the beginning was to make Michael Myers talk. Now, Michael Myers does understand and know how to speak, he just chooses not to. So this doctor wanted to gain a better understanding as to if Michael can somehow talk to someone, if he can utter out any sort of words, and I really expected by the end of this movie for Michael to finally talk, for Michael to finally say something, but he never did. Michael never once uttered a single word in this movie. Now his face was shown here and there, but not as much as you would expect. He's an old man, there is nothing to him, but I think that the element of his mystique and his aura is what really drove this movie in being that good. And I really want to say that the only thing that was basically a downfall for me was the entire encounter with the doctor. He had his face stomped out by the end, which was pretty intense. But also, there were certain elements about the school prom that I think were not needed because there was a person that Allison was seeing by the name of Cameron, and Cameron ended up doing basically something stupid and playing her for another girl, and that was kind of uncalled for because I really wish we got more of Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, but I also have to understand that this movie is not just about Laurie Strode or Michael Myers, it's about Laurie and her family, it's about the entire town of Hattonfield, and this is a lot bigger than Michael Myers himself, although Michael was the centerpiece of attention because people didn't really believe in his lore, nobody truly cared to begin with until we saw murders start to happen left and right on Halloween night, but this movie, I will say, if you really stop and pay attention to it, is one of the best Halloween movies of all time. If anything, this movie is definitely within my top three. Now, a lot of people are going to give this movie lots of criticism for its lack of tension or its lack of atmosphere, which is complete BS because this movie from the start did build on lots of tension and a very dark atmosphere based on the music, based on the presentation, and the movie did feel like a tragedy story for Lori, but also you can tell that Michael kind of gave off a different vibe. His overall portrayal was very dark, and he was very ruthless in this movie. I don't think that we've ever seen Michael kind of act this way before, aside from the retconned movies, as an example, H2O, or perhaps maybe Resurrection, but here, he was a bit more cunning, he was a bit more devious, and he was aggressive. He was absolutely aggressive in everything he did, and I really did enjoy the bits of comedy, because it did kind of lower the tense moments just for a minute, just for everyone to catch their breath. It wasn't something too hysterical, it wasn't something to where you had to sit there and really laugh at. It was just like mindless little jokes here and there, but I really did not feel as if comedy had engulfed the entire film, not at all. I think that this movie served its purpose in terms of telling that story and eventually continuing that story between Michael and Laurie because I truly do feel as if this is not the end, but I also love Laurie's side to the story because she was very paranoid, she was very aggressive, and in comparison to her 1978 counterpart, she really did put in a lot of work to serve her purpose as a public figure in trying to tell her side of the story without having to gain any sympathy because as the reporters in the beginning of the movie were asking her questions, she really wasn't trying to abide by meeting Michael, trying to compromise with Michael. She knew what Michael was. She knew exactly what was going on in Michael's head and she knew that Michael was a shapeless 
helpless, lifeless being that needed to be put down by any means of the standard. There was no way that he should have been kept around for anything, and that was Lori's main message in the movie. And I think that a lot of the other side characters were a bit gullible, as an example, security guards and police officers, because it just seemed like nobody really, really cared as much as Lori for this particular situation and Michael having to roam around and be free in Hattonfield again. But I will say, a lot of the kills that he had made on the town and the people of the town were basically paying homage to the original Halloween movies, Halloween 2, Halloween 5, Halloween 6, Resurrection, so that was pretty cool to see. And the ending of this movie did kind of give me a Resurrection-esque kind of vibe with the whole house burning down. However, in this particular situation, Michael had no means of escape. He he was left standing there just looking at Lori while he basically burned alive. And the whole supernatural essence of Michael I don't think exists in this movie. I think that this is one of the only films that Michael feels more like a person because despite him having to be hurt, despite him having to show basic you know, signs of like interaction with kids. He didn't really harm every kid he came across, but he had some sort of means for a motive. And I think that his overall aggressiveness did serve its purpose. But the only thing is, they really tried to get him to talk and he didn't speak. But the entire time, I was really wondering to myself if, in fact, he was going to speak by the end, and he didn't. And the best part is, after seeing the ending and sticking around for the credits and hearing him breathe, it's as clear as day that he has escaped. But the question is how but by the end i would like to get your thoughts in the comment section below how did you guys personally feel about this movie did you guys like the movie did you guys hate the movie what were some of your pros and cons about this movie and if you have any theories for the upcoming halloween movie which is inevitable what do you think is going to happen let us know your thoughts in the comment section below thank you all so much for watching guys once more if of course you guys love halloween and are new to this channel don't forget to smash that subscribe button leave a like down below on this video if you guys enjoyed halloween Tune back in for more, and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.